During post-cardiac arrest care, what is the recommended target temperature range for therapeutic hypothermia? A. 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. B. 32 to 36 degrees Celsius. C. 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. D. 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. Answer. B. The current ACLS guidelines recommend maintaining a temperature between 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for targeted temperature management after cardiac arrest. A patient in ventricular tachycardia with a pulse becomes unstable with hypotension. What is the next best step? A. Administer 4 amiodaron. B. Perform synchronized cardioversion. C. Begin chest compressions immediately. D. Give 4 lidocaine. Answer, B. Unstable VT with a pulse requires immediate synchronized cardioversion rather than drug therapy. Which rhythm requires immediate unsynchronized defibrillation rather than synchronized cardioversion? A. Atrial fibrillation with RVR. B. Supraventricular tachycardia. C. Ventricular fibrillation. D. Monomorphic VT with pulse. Answer, C. Defibrillation is required for pulseless rhythms such as VF and pulseless VT. The recommended first dose of 4-amiodaron during cardiac arrest is A. 100 mg B. 150 mg C. 300 mg D. 450 mg Answer, C. The initial dose is 300 mg 4 slash IO push during cardiac arrest. A patient with suspected STEMI is in cardiogenic shock. Which agent should be avoided? A. Norepinephrine. B. Dopamine. C. Morphine. D. Epinephrine. Answer. C. Morphine may worsen hypotension and suppress respiration, so it is avoided in cardiogenic shock. After return of spontaneous circulation, ROSC, what is the target systolic blood pressure? A. Greater than or equal to 80 millimeters of mercury. B. Greater than or equal to 90 millimeters of mercury. C. Greater than or equal to 100 millimeters of mercury. D. Greater than or equal to 120 millimeters of mercury. Answer, B. Post ROSC management includes maintaining SBP greater than or equal to 90 millimeters of mercury to ensure organ perfusion. Which antiarrhythmic is recommended if amiodarone is unavailable during cardiac arrest? A. Atropine. B. Procainamide. C. Lidocaine. D. Adenosine. Answer, C. Lidocaine is the alternative to amiodaron in refractory VF or pulseless VT. What is the maximum interval between rhythm checks during CPR? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 15 seconds. D. 20 seconds. Answer, B. Rhythm and pulse checks should not interrupt compressions for more than 10 seconds. During ACLS, how often should epinephrine be administered in pulseless arrest? A. Every 2 minutes. B. Every 3 minutes. C. Every 4 minutes. D. Every 5 minutes. Answer. A. 1 mg epinephrine 4 slash IO should be given every 3 to 5 minutes, timing aligns best with every 2 cycles of CPR, almost equals 2 minutes. What is the preferred airway confirmation method after endotracheal intubation in ACLS? A. Chest rise observation. B. Condensation in tube. C. Capnography waveform. D. Esophageal detector device. Answer. C. Continuous waveform capnography is the gold standard for confirming placement. Which rhythm is most likely to deteriorate into ventricular fibrillation if untreated? A. Torsades to points. B. Junctional rhythm. C. First degree AV block. D. Sinus bradycardia. Answer. A. 
torsades can rapidly progress to VF and requires immediate magnesium or defibrillation if pulseless. A patient in pulseless electrical activity, PEA, should receive which initial drug? A. Amiodarone. B. Lidocaine. C. Epinephrine. D. Adenosine. Answer, C. Epinephrine is the first drug given for PEA or asystole. Which reversible cause of cardiac arrest is corrected with needle decompression? A. Hypovolemia. B. Tension pneumothorax. C. Hypokalemia. D. Tamponade. Answer, B. Needle decompression relieves tension pneumothorax, one of the H's and T's. A patient develops bradycardia with a heart rate of 30 BPM and hypotension. What is the first-line treatment? A. Epinephrine infusion. B. Atropine 1 mg 4. C. Transcutaneous pacing. D. Dopamine infusion. Answer, B. Atropine is the first-line agent for symptomatic bradycardia. In which condition is adenosine contraindicated? A. Narrow complex SVT. B. Regular monomorphic wide complex tachycardia. C. Irregular wide complex tachycardia. D. AV nodal reentry tachycardia. Answer, C. Adenosine should not be used in irregular wide complex rhythms, such as pre-excited AF. A patient in cardiac arrest with known hyperkalemia should be treated with A. Calcium chloride B. Lidocaine C. Adenosine D. Magnesium sulfate Answer, A. Calcium chloride stabilizes myocardial cells in hyperkalemia-induced arrest. Which of the following is the best indicator of high-quality chest compressions? A. Fast compression rate only. B. Visible chest recoil. C. Loud compression clicks. D. Entitled CO2 of greater than 20 mm of mercury. Answer, D. An ETCO2 reading greater than 20 mm of mercury correlates with effective compressions and perfusion. Which vasopressor may be used as an alternative to epinephrine during CPR? A. Norepinephrine. B. Dopamine. C. Vasopressin. D. Dobutamine. Answer, C. Vasopressin can be used as an alternative, although epinephrine remains first line. What is the recommended energy dose for biphasic defibrillation of VF? A. 100J. B. 120 to 200 J. C. 250 J. D. 360 J. Answer, B. The initial biphasic dose is 120 to 200 J, depending on the device. Which action is critical immediately after defibrillation? A. Check the pulse. B. Check blood pressure. C. Administer epinephrine. D. Resume compressions. Answer, D. CPR must be resumed immediately after a shock to maintain perfusion. Which ACLS intervention is most effective in improving survival in witnessed VF arrest? A. Early epinephrine. B. Rapid defibrillation. C. Intubation. D. Amiodarone. Answer, B. Early defibrillation is the most important determinant of survival in VF. Which is the preferred vascular access route during cardiac arrest? A. Central line. B. Intraosseous. C. Peripheral 4. D. Subcutaneous. Answer, C. Peripheral 4 is fastest and most practical, IO is next if 4 access is unavailable which is not included in the HS and TS reversible causes. A. Hypoglycemia. B. Hypothermia. C. Tension pneumothorax. D. Thrombosis. Answer, A. Hypoglycemia is not in the HS and TS list, though it can cause altered mental status.
a patient in ROSC has a persistent ETCO2 of 15 mm of mercury. What does this suggest? A. Excellent perfusion. B. Poor cardiac output. C. Normal oxygenation. D. Adequate tidal volume. Answer, B. Low ETCO2 post-ROSC indicates inadequate cardiac output. During CPR, when is advanced airway placement considered? A. After 1 minute of CPR. B. After 2 cycles of CPR if bag mask is inadequate. C. Immediately upon arrival. D. Only after ROSC. Answer, B. An advanced airway is placed if ventilation with bag mask is ineffective after initial CPR cycles. What is the first-line agent for torsades to points? A. Amiodarone B. Lidocaine C. Magnesium sulfate D. Atropine Answer, C. Magnesium sulfate stabilizes the myocardium in torsades to points. Which of the following is true about chest compression fraction, CCF? A. It should be less than 50%. B. It reflects the ratio of pauses to compressions. C. It should be greater than or equal to 60%. D. Optimal is greater than or equal to 80%. Answer, D. The best outcomes are linked with chest compression fraction greater than or equal to 80%. Which statement about intraosseous, IO, access in ACLS is correct? A. It is slower than central line placement. B. Drugs given IO reach circulation as effectively as 4. C. It should not be used in adults. D. IO access is contraindicated in CPR. Answer, B. IO access provides equally effective drug delivery during CPR. Which drug is contraindicated in pulseless arrest? A. Epinephrine B. Amiodarone C. Atropine D. Lidocaine Answer, C. Atropine is no longer recommended for asystole or PEA. In which situation should chest compressions be paused for a pulse check? A. Every 30 seconds B. After every shock and rhythm analysis. C. After every drug administration. D. After every 5 minutes. Answer, B. Compressions are paused only briefly for rhythm analysis and pulse check post-shock.